McIntyre, and it's my pleasure to take you back in time to the shows that were such an important part of our lives, and still are. In today's Daytime to Remember, we'll show you just what one life to live Karen Wollett did to keep her sister Jenny happy. Now, I have two sisters, Susie and Alice, and I know in my heart that I'd do anything for them. My brother, Pate, too. Back in 1979, Karen and Jenny were as close as two sisters could be, though they were different as night and day. Jenny was a former nun and as sweet a girl as you'll ever find. Karen, as we saw in yesterday's show, was a reformed woman of ill repute. In today's show, Jenny has just given birth to a baby girl who was clinging to life in the hospital nursery. And to make matters worse, she had just thrown her philandering husband, Brad, out of the house for good. In this episode, Karen and Marco are in the hospital nursery visiting Jenny's baby, who lies next to another baby, the newborn daughter of Karen's hooker friend, Katrina Carr. Two mothers, two newborn babies, and one very loyal woman willing to break the law for her sister. First, let's check into Landfair, where Dorian Lord is meeting with the new editor of the banner, Clint Buchanan. Let's take a trip back to the fall of 1979 to witness this story, picked by People Magazine as one of the best ever. <laughs> Clint, I'm so glad you could stop by. I hope I haven't interrupted your evening. Oh, well, please sit down at any rate. Oh, you look tired. Are you hungry? I, I, I could have a cook make you up a light supper. No, no, I had something before I left the office. What seems to be the problem? Oh, um, well, I just got the Banner's financial report this morning, and, uh, I do have several problems with it. Um, I made you a... A copy. I've, I've marked the problem areas uh, with paper clips. I wasn't aware that you had started an internship program. I think it's a wonderful idea. So is that one of the items you're having a problem with? No, no. Uh, Alicia, what is it? Uh, Miss Cummings and Miss Ashley have just arrived, ma'am. Did you tell them that I was in the middle of a business meeting and couldn't be disturbed? Uh, yes, ma'am, but they said it was very important. Something about uh, a budget problem for next week's show. This seems to be uh, your evening for dealing with financial problems. <laughs> Felicia, would you please show them in? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I, I keep hoping that Gretel will be able to handle these problems by herself. Ah, they confer with me on absolutely every decision. Uh, if you'd prefer, Dorian, I could, uh, I could leave. No, 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 that won't be necessary. It should only take a minute, and then you and I can get back to our conference. Uh, Pat, Gretel, uh, we're sorry to interrupt you. Well, as a matter of fact, Clint and I were discussing some business, but um, what can I do for you? Now, Jenny, you try to get some sleep because tomorrow morning you're going down to the nursery to see the baby. Oh, and you expect me to sleep? Well, to try dreaming about the baby. After all, she happens to be the most beautiful baby in the nursery. <laughs> A purely subjective opinion, Doctor? No, no. All the nurses agree with me. Mm -hmm. Do they have another choice? No. <laughs> Look, is there anything you need? No, I'm just fine. Okay, I'll be up tomorrow morning after breakfast to see you, okay? okay? Well... Yep. Yeah. She's gonna be okay, isn't she? Well, of course. What are you worried about, Jenny? Well, she's so tiny. Well, there's nothing to worry about. She's gonna be fine. Her, her vital signs are being monitored, and so far, no complications. I know, but I can't help but worry about her. In the delivery room, her, her first cry sounded so weak, I could barely hear her. Jenny, will you please stop it? She is going to be fine. Nothing is going to happen to her. Come on. She's dead, Karen. Oh, no. Oh, no, she can't be. Why don't the three of you sit down, make yourselves comfortable? 
I'm sure you have a lot of catching up to do. series on the nursing home scandal. In fact, we were thinking about doing a show on the same subject. Good. I'm glad to hear it. I think it's an important story. Uh, of course, it might mean some more location shooting. Well, we do tend to over, <laughs> overbook ourselves on location shooting, as you can see. <laughs> so I see. Clint, look, uh, I hope it's not too late to call a truce here. Pat, I've always prided myself on being able to size people up pretty quick. But you know, in your case, I was dead wrong. As far as I'm concerned, you're asking me questions about my family the other day on your show was a cheap shot. Now, just a minute. Now that you see uh, your little scheme backfired, you want to save face by, what, apologizing? Doesn't work with me. Very well. It's all taken care of. You may go ahead with your location shooting, but I want to see a copy, a uh, final copy of that budget by tomorrow morning, okay? Oh, Dorian, that would be a little... I, I know you're going to try your best. Please have it messengered over to me by 11 o'clock. We'll be fine. It was really good seeing you both. I'm glad I could help out, but at the moment I have other problems. Ah, uh, good seeing you, really. You know, yes. you're looking so well. Thanks, Dorian. Bye, Dorian. Bye-bye. Bye. Anytime. Really? I was hoping that at this point, Gretel would be able to handle problems like that by herself. Obviously, I was mistaken. Well, having to work with that prima donna can't help any. Hey, I'm sorry I talked so long. I hope I didn't keep you up. Oh, no, that's all right. I wanted to finish this anyway. Listen. If I don't see you tomorrow, good luck with your baby and everything. Thanks. Yeah, I hope things work out for you, too. Well, they usually do. I'll check out of here in a couple of days, you know, and the baby will have a nice home and a mom and a dad who love her. You talked to the nurses about uh, seeing her yet? No, uh-uh, not yet. I spent so much time during my pregnancy convincing myself that I never wanted to lay eyes on her that I think I started to believe it. You mean you changed your mind? Well, it's just kind of dumb. You know, I mean, I don't think that it could do a whole lot of harm if I just see her one time. Oh! Oh, well, everybody tells me that she is just beautiful, so I have to see her for myself. It would just take a minute, and it would be the only time I'd ever get to look at her. Mm, well, you just be careful, you know, because once you see her, you'll want to hold her. And once you've taken her in your arms, well, you just may never want to let her go. I don't think I have to worry about that. She'll be in an incubator anyway, so I won't be able to touch her. I'll just sort of look through that little glass window, you know. Do you think that's... That'd be okay if I did that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what I could do? I could tell the nurse to just wheel me down there the first thing tomorrow morning. What are we going to tell Jenny? This baby was Jenny's whole life. I'm sorry. I have to go get the duty nurse. No, please, just wait a minute. We don't have to tell anybody yet. Listen, we, we have to report it. Um, we don't have to tell Jenny until tomorrow, okay? Wait a minute. We may never have to tell Jenny at all. Katrina's baby's doing great. What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. Katrina doesn't want her baby. She even refused to see it. You know that. Let's give Katrina's baby to Jenny. Nobody ever has to know about it. Before we head back to Landview, I was just wondering if you're noticing that Clint is being romanced by Dorian Lord. 
of all people. That could never really happen today, could it? But back in 1979, Clint seemed to like Dorian's attention. What's next on the agenda? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to discuss the election. Oh, don't tell me that Herb Callison has been to you for an endorsement. No, not yet, but the paper is going to have to take a position pretty soon. Now, I've never been swayed by polls, and I don't intend to start now. I'd, I'd like to follow my instincts on this. And are you so sure that your instincts are always right? Well, they've never let me down before. Uh, seems to me that your judgment of Pat Ashley was pretty off-base. Well, I guess there is an exception to every rule. <laughs> Tell you what. I will let you decide who the banner is going to endorse if uh, you will return the favor. <laughs> well, that depends on what it is. All right. It's a situation where you can use those um, infallible instincts of yours. You see, uh, my groom retired several years ago, and ever since he left, I haven't taken the right kind of interest in my stables. I mean, I haven't bought a new horse in, in well over a year. Well, if you need some advice, I'd be uh, happy to help out. As a matter of fact, I'm planning to go to a horse auction next week. Oh, I always get so confused during the bidding. I, I'm so afraid of making a mistake. Well, that sounds like fun. Uh, I'd like that. Suppose I call you at the end of the week after I know what my schedule is going to be. Good. You know, the one disadvantage about living in Landview is uh, I don't get to ride the way I'd like to, you know? I mean, I got some good horses back home in Arizona, and I really miss not being able to saddle up and go for a ride when I got some free time. Oh, I just got the most wonderful idea. Why don't you have your favorite horse shipped here? You can keep him in my stable. My goodness, you can go riding whenever you like. There's plenty of room. You know, at one time, Vic Victor kept oh, a dozen horses. I used to ride myself almost every day. Unfortunately, I, I haven't. I've been meaning to go back to it for months. Knowing that you were keeping your horse here would be just the incentive I need. I really do hate to ride alone. That's why I gave it up. Dorian, I'm sure that you have a lot of friends that are ready, willing, and able to uh, accompany you. I'm not asking any of them. And it isn't just anybody's company that I want. Yes, I know. I'll keep the offer in mind. Good. Now... Shall we, uh, get back to work? I want to get finished with this. I know how exhausted you must be. You... can't be serious. I have never been more serious about anything in my life. But Trita has already given that baby up for adoption. That would be devastated. Yes, I know she would be devastated. But she'll get over it. She never really wanted the baby anyway. But Kenny does. We're talking about my sister's life. Kenny doesn't have anything in the world except for this baby. And I will not stand by and see my sister's life destroyed when I know we can help her. Come on, Marco. Come on, that baby is up for adoption. That baby needs a good home, lots of love. Who in the world do you know would make a better mother than Jenny? Who would give that baby more love? Yeah, I mean, if anybody ever found that. Nobody's gonna find out. Just switch the identification bracelets. I seem to remember something recently. A uh, one doctor, Mario Corelli, came to me and begged me to give him a second chance. Begged me not to destroy his life and tell everybody that I found out that he was Marco Dane. Marco, I'm begging you. Please. Please, you got help, Jen. Please, just, just make the switch before the nurses come back. Marco. I know you love Jenny as much as I do. Please. Help me. Please. All right, all right, Kip, go, go, go out. The duty nurse is coming back any second. Go keep her occupied for a while while I make the switch. Mrs. 
to all that kind. I'm I'm Jenny Burton's uh, uh, sister. Uh, yes, Mrs. And Walker, I thought, no, no, actually, it's just that uh, Jenny's a little concerned. She's a little upset. She's not getting very much sleep. So she wants me to check on the baby, and I know that unless I find out if it's all right, she's not going to be okay. She's not going to be able to Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wallace, but only authorized personnel are allowed in the nursery. Oh, now, I'm, you'll excuse me. I, I, no, I know. I, I, I know. You could just stretch the rules a little bit, just this one time, please. Because, uh, really, I know she's been under a lot of stress lately, and it was... I'm, I'm sorry, but it's... Uh, Dr. Corelli, is anything the matter? To Katrina Carr, baby, she died. Well, Marco did it. Switched babies. He really didn't want to do it, but come on. Could you turn Karen down? That girl could sell me the Brooklyn Bridge. Switching babies was just one of the many misadventures Mark O'Dane gave us over the years. And here's something even I didn't know about. Would you believe that Marco was only supposed to be on the show for eight days and then out? But he became so instantly popular that he stuck around for a full decade. Mark O'Dane was a real favorite of mine. I'm sorry. There was nothing that could be done to prevent it. Peter? I'm glad you're here. I guess that uh, Mario has just told you what's happened. Yeah, his diagnosis is respiratory failure. That baby died 20 minutes ago. Well, uh, Katrina Carr will have to be told as soon as possible. Re really? Why? Well, Karen, I, I'm afraid in cases like this, it is best to tell the mother immediately. Uh, no, Zan, I, I don't think there's anything to be gained by telling her right now. It's very late. I'm sure she's asleep by now. There's no point in waking her up to give her bad news. Yeah, but that means we're going to be the ones to tell her tomorrow morning. You see, her own obstetrician should do it, but he's not going to be in until tomorrow afternoon. All right, Sam. I understand that. I'll tell her. I think she should be told first thing in the morning, though. Mm -hmm. Karen, your Katrina car is uh, closest friend. I think that you should be there. Well... Well, really, that, man, that doesn't make any... Uh, well, sure, uh, that'd be all right. You don't mind. No, no, it's not that I mind. It's just that I, I think that um, she probably want to ask you a lot of questions and medical questions. I understand. I'll try to handle that as quickly and as efficiently as I can, but the important thing is that she's got somebody there for emotional support. Karen, I agree. I would really appreciate your help in this. But, you know, right now, I think you should try to get home and get some rest. If you'll excuse us just for a minute, Peter, I need your advice on the Henderson baby. So. Sure, thank you. Well, what am I going to do when, uh, when I'm there when he tells her? Look, you must have known this was going to happen. Well, I didn't know I was going to be there when he told her. Well, look, we've come this far. There's nothing we can do now but go through with it. Come on, you're going to get that ride home, finally. Virginia and Katrina, who both took the news, or should I say the lie, rather badly. 
But in the summer of 1982, Jenny's world was about to come crashing down in the most shocking way. Join me tomorrow for part two of One Life to Live's unforgettable Baby Switch. you got to see this one. Baby Switch. Tonight, if a cop can't protect his own daughter from drugs, how can you? The shocking drug culture our kids face every day at school on an all-new high incident. ABC Tonight. Watch what happens when Jake is faced with Liza's heartbreaking betrayal on All My Children today. On One Life to Live. There was a match. New baby could save Star's life. I would want you to agree to premature delivery. So now my son's in jeopardy. Star's white blood count is perniciously low. Why can't we do the transplant now? The sooner the better. The baby's father, I'm not sure how he's going to react. What am I supposed to do? One Life to Live, ABC Daytime.